how to use read only. Starting with the login, you will type in the username that has been provided to you, as well as the corresponding password. If you would like to reset that password, you can always hit this little key right here. Once hitting next, it will prompt you to change your password. Select whatever password you would like and hit OK. From here, you have four tabs. The first tab is going to be your home tab. This is where you will be able to see the tracking statuses that your equipment is in, as well as the events uh, that we can apply to this equipment, which we'll go over here in a minute. The next tab is going to be your equipment view tab. This is where you can look at the information regarding your equipment. Next, we have the events, which are a request pickup and request service on site. And then we have different searches and reports available to you. We are gonna go through each one of these tabs in detail, um, so do not worry if you miss anything. Starting with the Home View tab, we have your Equipment Status Snapshot, which has the different tracking statuses that your equipment could be in, as well as the counts. In the middle portion, we have the tracking statuses that your equipment could be in, as well as the counts also. But there are interactive tracking statuses. So if I want to see exactly how many assets are in a waiting shipment, I just click on a waiting shipment, and it brings up a search report of all of the assets that are in that tracking status as well as some additional information. If I want to go directly to that asset, I just simply double click on it and it takes me to uh, the equipment view screen. Within your equipment view page, starting at the upper left hand corner, we have the ID, we have your tracking status that it's in, and the company that it pertains to. We have some navigational arrows for you right here. We have uh, a recall recently viewed equipment list. So this is gonna be the last 10 assets that you've taken a look at. And then we have uh, a printer for printing this page here. We have some asset descriptors, um, which is just gonna be the different equipment information that pertains to this asset, whether it's active or inactive, a service overview of who serviced it, um, the last calibration, the frequency and interval, and the due date. And then we have uh, asset and lab notes here. Starting in the upper right hand corner, we have the tracking status and information that pertains to that tracking status. And then you can also see the calibration schedule here. If we go back to the upper left hand corner, um, the ID is also a quick search for finding equipment. So if we click on this Dylan 443A, um, we have a, a search menu right here for you um, where we can find different assets. So I want to show you one with uh, a calibration applied to it. So let's target this asset right here. I just pick this force gauge and double click on it. So if you notice down here at the bottom, we have history, notes and docs, and attributes. So I can now see a calibration event that has been applied to this as well as the cert in the uh, right hand corner. Um, we also have an outsource calibration event that has been applied to this equipment. So you'll be able to see any history uh, for this asset. Next, you'll go to the notes and docs to see any kind of notes in the system. And then we have some attributes. So if you would like to request uh, for different fields to be updated, uh, or if you've been given the rights to update fields, uh, that will all be set up um, by your company. All right. Next, I'd like to talk about um, search and report. We'll get back to events here in a minute, but let's go ahead and talk about uh, search report tab. Starting at the top, if you've been given access to multiple companies, uh, you can always click on this tab to change companies. The next one is going to be how you bring up individual certificates. Uh, so you just simply click on this and type in the cert number. The legacy search buys is going to be how you search for assets with uh, specific descriptors. So we can search by just the ID, just the serial number, just the description, 
and so on. Next we have the equipment finder, um, which the equipment finder is going to be an all-inclusive equipment search. Um, so we're about to go into that in detail. Um, and then the event finder uh, is an all-inclusive event search. So starting with equipment finder, right here we're going to start with simple equipment selection. You select your company and then uh, if you would like to just simply type in an ID, you can bring up all the IDs that begin with uh, some kind of identifier. If you want to search for something other than ID, you look at the column headers of, of these different um, descriptors and you just simply click on them and then it'll ask if you want to search by uh, that column header. So if I want to search by description, I now can search by description. If I want to search by type, I simply click on that header and say yes. All right. So we can do that for any of these column headers. If I click on serial number, I say yes. And then you can see that it switches uh, to that serial number. All right. So let's go back to ID. And then let's uh, look at these three assets. So let's say that you want to uh, mass print um, all of the certs for these assets. I simply hit this double blue down arrow. Okay, bring them all down here. And then I have some printing tools up here. So I go to this printer and I can say print certs for all equipment. All right, so this is gonna be all of the um, certs uh, for this equipment here. And it can be from certain ranges, so all the calibration events that happen from a certain date range. And then you just hit OK. If you would like to customize the columns that are located here for the asset, you can see that we have plenty of column headers here. If you would like to edit that, I recommend going in the upper left-hand corner here, right-clicking and selecting Alphabetize Non-Visible Fields. Once you do that, you then click on this upper left hand corner again, and it gives you all the potential column headers that you can activate. If you want to activate department, you just check that box. If you want to activate owner or master or manufacturer, you just simply check that box. If you want to uncheck any of the ones that are currently in here, uh, you just simply click on them. Once done, you have uh, the different um, column headers that have been added and you can move them around to whatever location you would like. Coming back up to the top, we have an advanced equipment selection as well. So advanced equipment selection, this will take a little bit of time to get used to, but we start at the top by saying, okay, the company is equal to blank. Then, if you want to search for any specific thing, you can look through this list. Just simply click on the first entity and look at what you have. So you have active. If you only want to look at active assets, you can say active is checked. If you want to look at a certain type of gauge, we can type in type, click on it and say type is exactly. Click on this question mark and, and type in what it is. Or we can say can uh, contains uh, caliper. Let's see if we have any assets. We have zero records with that. But what you can do is you can customize your search here. So please play around with that, get comfortable with it, and if you find a search that you really like, so if this filter yields something that you want to save down, you can always hit this uh, save button right here and type in the name of that search. So that could be um, a active caliper, um, hit OK, and then now we have a drop down list over here of the different filters that you've saved. So if I hit this uh, broomstick and clear this away, I go back here, click on it, and it brings up that filter again. And always remember that if you hit this stopwatch, it will tell you how many. Um, what your filter has picked up, how many assets are in that filter. 
right? Exiting out of here, if we go back to search report, legacy search by event finder, we click on event finder, and this is how we can target specific events. So if I just say that I want to look at um, every event type that is a calibration, I can bring it down and then uh, look at the different calibrations, look at who entered it, look at the ID that it's associated with. We then do the same thing where we click in the upper left hand corner and these are all the fields that are located here. So if you would like, uh, we've turned on all of them here, so let's uncheck some of these. And then let's scroll over here. We have some manufacturer, model, type, description um, added to uh, the event finder for you. And so you can always come in here for a calibration event and look at the ID. And if you want to go to that ID, you just simply double click on it and it takes you to that asset. And then down here, um, you can take a look at all of the history pertaining uh, per pertinent to that asset. Go back into search report. Um, we can take a look at the other custom reports that have been created for you here. Um, so you can always uh, come in here and play around with those. Uh, we have some serial number searches, description searches, current status, asset number, and advanced equipment selection, which is very similar to equipment finder. Um, and then right here, uh, probably uh, you will use these the most but it's due for calibration within seven days. So if we click here, we can see um, exactly what that calibration due date is for what assets. Um, and then if we come in here, we can look at due for calibration in 30 days. Clicking on here, you can see um, that calibration schedule there for those assets. Click on this printer utility and you can print these certs, either the highlighted equipment or all equipment. And then over here we have a equipment view and then a output tab. So if you guys are wanting to uh, send this out to Excel, you just simply click on Excel file and hit create, name the file and save it to your computer. All right, we hit okay. Um, and that concludes search and report. So we come up to uh, the events tab and we just simply, simply run the uh, request pickup or request service on site here. We can also go to the home page, and we have two big buttons for you right here. So if you click request pickup, we go ahead and run this event, and you can fill in any pertaining information up here. You may have different fields accessible to you. You can put any kind of comments by clicking edit. Um, you know, please review blank and then down here uh, you can simply type in an asset and hit enter or you can come over here to these binoculars and search by various methods um, I showed you how to use the equipment finder um, so you can always rewatch that section if you need a refresher or the most simple way to find an asset is just go to add equipment search by ID and then this brings up all the equipment by ID, double click on it, and then it'll bring in that equipment. If you would like to bring in multiple pieces of equipment, simply go back to the list and select another one. And then we hit finish. Depending on how this has been set up for you, um, those assets are put into a tracking status for you um, and uh, most likely there is a report that will be emailed to them from that event as well. The exact same process will be utilized for requesting on-site pickups, or sorry, on-site on service, um, and the search methods are the same. All right. I hope, you, I hope that this uh, read-only training has been beneficial to you. Um, have a great day.